Welcome to this video on how to use GeoGebra, which is this program here, and your graphing calculator to try and solve some simultaneous equations. So what we have here is just a basic question. When do the following expressions intersect, or when do they meet, or when are they equal? So we're given here um, a quadratic, so we can tell this one's going to give us a parabola because there's a power 2. And the second one here we can see is going to be a linear um, a linear graph because there's no power um, to the 2. So this one, we're just going to sort of rewrite this in function form. By saying f of x is equal to what we have over here. Now what we can do is in GeoGebra, we can type this expression in. So we write f of x is equal to x. Now in order to do this in GeoGebra, you're going to have to use the shift and the 6 key to give you this symbol that will represent raised to the exponent of 2 plus 6x plus 8. Once you type that in and you press enter, it's going to graph that line for you which you can see here. Now for the second line, we can see here that it actually has more than one variable here. So we're going to have to first solve for one of these variables. Now quite often we think about expressions as y equals, so I'm going to choose to solve for y and take us through the steps. So first I'm going to set it equal to 0, so I turn this into an equation and then I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides so y gets on uh, the right hand side by itself and then I'm going to get rid of the negative 2 by dividing both sides by negative 2. So I end up with 3x plus 5 divided by negative 2 and if I write that in function notation it's f of x is equal to 3x plus 5 over negative 2. Now what you'll see here is that we have two f of x's that actually will not work for us. If we have two functions that we're trying to use at the, in the same problem, we give the other one another name like g or h, but we usually go in order, so after g is f, and that's just conventional. So now when we type this one, we won't type f of x because that will confuse the program. f of x is this, this expression. Um, g of x is going to be this one. So g of x is equal to, in order to write this in the computer, we're going to have to take our numerator and put it in brackets, so 3x plus 5, and then put a dividing sign, and the dividing uh, sign is a backslash, divided by negative 2. So if we press enter on that one, it puts up both of our graphs on the exact same axes. So now that's beneficial for us because we can do a couple different things with this. The first thing we can do is find their intersection graphically. So in other words, when are they equal to each other? Well, they're equal to each other when they cross or when they intersect. So if you go to the tools here and you go to point tools and intersect two objects, what you do is you select the first line and the second line nearer to um, one point that you want to intersect first and it automatically finds the intersect there and the intersect there. So there are two intersections when x is negative 5.64 and when x is negative 1.86. So you can see here that you know these are rounded so there's definitely some comments on accuracy that you can make there whereas if we were to solve this algebraically we could probably get um, a more accurate answer but we're doing graphically right now. So that's how you graph and find the intersects in GeoGebra. So when do they intersect at those two values, when x is those two values? So let's take a look at how we do this in the graphing calculator, because it can do the same thing. So in the graphing calculator, when we want to make a graph, we click with the y equals. So here, they don't use function notation like f of x, g of x. They still use y1 and y2. So it doesn't really matter whether you're writing f of x um, or y, um, it's, it's going to mean the same thing. What's important is what's over here. So it's just different notation. In your graphing calculator, you're going to use y equals, and in GeoGebra, you're going to use the function notation. 
So here we write x squared. So the x is this button here that represents a variable and the square button is right here x squared plus 6x plus 8. So when we graph that we can see our graph show up and it's of course going to be very similar to this one right here. Um, in fact it'll be exactly the same of course. And then for a second one again we have to rearrange the formula so that it can be in the y equals forms for our graphing calculator. So we'll click down and we'll write 3x plus 5 in brackets again because otherwise we might get an error with order of operations. 3x plus 5 divided by negative 2. Now another thing you can do here is if you ever are worried that your lines might look similar, you can always make one a little bit darker by going to the left, selecting this so it's highlighted and pressing enter once will give you a thick line. So when we, when we graph this, the thick line will be our y2 and the thinner line will be this one. So now let's hit graph. And so now we can see both on the same axes just like we did over here. Now we can see here that this is an okay graph, but we could probably try and zoom in so that we can see this a little more clearly. So in order to do that, we can sort of visualize first, okay, it looks like all of these are by one. So maybe um, I can go over to about, you know, negative eight over here. I don't really need to have this side of the, I don't need to have quadrant one really. And I don't really need to go down below maybe negative two on the y-axis. So I'm going to change that around. So the x min, um, I'm going to say, well, really, I only care about if it goes down to about negative eight. And maybe there wasn't much in quadrant one, so maybe a maximum of one. And the x scale, the x scale just means I want it, each line to count by one. So one, two, three, four. So that means one at a time. For the y-axis, again, a lot of the bottom was empty, so probably just go down to negative two. And the y-max, uh, we seem to have everything we could see there, um, so maybe we'll just leave that one alone. And the y-scale, again, is going by one. So once we've changed that, we click graph again. And now it's zoomed in very nicely on the part of the graph that we're actually interested in. So now let's talk about how to solve that. To get our intersection, all we need to do is go second function and then press the trace button. And the second function is actually trying to access this calc function. So second trace. And then number five is what we call the intersect. So select five. Now you'll see there's a little blinking slider here. What you want to do is just get it closer to one of the intersections and press enter. And then the, when you press enter, a blinker will come up on the second function and then you'll just want to make sure again that it's closer to this intersection. We want to measure this first one first and then press enter again. It's going to ask do you want it to guess? Um, you just press enter again. It's going to calculate and again here's the intersect negative 1.86 and you can see that that was the same when we did this in GeoGebra and that's of course what we would expect. We're just trying to do the same thing on two different platforms. Now to do, um, you'll notice here that it only calculated the, this first intersection, not this one, whereas GeoGebra did both at the same time. Um, for us to do the second one, we're gonna have to go second calc again, five for intersect. And then when our blinker is there, we're gonna have to press the arrow until we're closer to this other intersection. So the proximity is gonna help the calculator know which one to, cal uh, to calculate. And this one is now closer to here, so we can just press enter again. It's going to ask us to guess, so we press enter again. And then there we see it found that intersect at negative 5.64. So you can see it was the same result again. So again, these intersects are the values at which um, those two expressions are equal when x is equal to those numbers. So this is a way to, again, find the answers um, using graphing functions on GeoGebra or on your graphing calculator.